Next time you're at an amusement park, don't be fooled by all the flashing lights, bright colors, and loud noises. They're only there to distract you from the insane, terrifying, and downright ridiculous things you don't notice going on around you. So today, we're going to unveil some of the wildest theme park moments, looking at insane animal encounters, bumper cart battle royales, terrifying rides, and crazy riders, as we check out the most ridiculous moments at amusement parks caught on camera. Amusement parks are supposed to be fun, but there are occasions where folks stand in line for hours to go on a thrilling ride before freezing in fear when reaching the front of the line. When you're faced with a giant looping roller coaster or a towering water slide, being brave is easier said than done. And sometimes we all need a little extra push. This water slide attendant is Mustafa Salah, an employee at the Aqua Park Cairo who's one part lifeguard and two parts gymnast. He went viral back in 2022 for his unorthodox method of pushing kids down his slide as he swings on the top of the water slide and sends them spinning down the tube. Now true, it's possible that sending guests screaming down the slide at mock speed may just be a satisfying way for Mustafa to let out some frustrations at dealing with annoying children all day but it seems pretty fun for all involved. I'll take two tickets aboard the Mustafa Express, please. Moving on to more water slide thrill rides now, there are some out there that are even more exhilarating than the Mustafa Express. One example is the Breakaway Falls in Aquatico, Orlando, a giant water slide involving an 80-foot tower with a trap door at the top. Instead of diving down the slide like normal, riders simply stand in a see-through tube and wait for the attendant to push a button that'll pull the ground from under their feet. At this point, riders enter a short freefall, dropping at 24 feet per second before reaching a near vertical tube that slowly levels off. Honestly, I think this one would be a little too intense for me. Would you ride it? Let me know in the comments down below. And why not throw a like and subscribe while you're down there to continue the thrill ride that is Be Amazed content. Now, if you'll put your hands back inside the ride, we'll continue. Rides like the Breakaway Falls are a favorite amongst adrenaline junkies, but some thrill seekers like to get their kicks in more unexpected places by turning the slowest rides at the amusement park into a more extreme experience. <laughs> Talk about a storm in a teacup. The teacup ride is usually meant to provide some fun for the families with small children. However, some people like to take their tea with extra caffeine, as they use the wheel in the middle of their teacup to spin themselves as quickly as possible. These high-octane tea parties look like a ton of fun, but sometimes spinning out of control can have some crazy consequences. <laughs> As these kids spun their teacup as quickly as possible, their duck-themed cart migrated out of the pond, falling off the ride platform and landing on the gravel below. Unfortunately, there isn't any background information about this footage online, so it's unclear whether the kids got kicked out of the park for breaking the ride. But it wouldn't surprise me if they got in a duckload of trouble. As this young pilot spins out of control on a ride at Pleasure Beach Blackpool, it looks like he should be calling out Mayday.
However, the Red Arrow Skyforce ride allows you to manually move your airplane's wings up and down to control how quickly the ride vehicle rotates. And this kid's spins are totally intentional. And while most people use this feature to give their plane a couple of twists during the ride, this unnamed teenager managed to push himself into a never-ending barrel roll, spinning around rapidly while his friends watched on and damn near peed their pants with laughter. The way that the teenager spun his ride is pretty hilarious, but this rookie pilot's spinning skills are nothing compared to this next flying ace. This insane footage comes from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shell Shock, a ride at the Mall of America in Minnesota. Most people go to the mall to buy new clothes and eat junk food, but when this roller coaster enthusiast called Tara visits the M of A, she goes with one sole purpose to spin. Tara has been visiting the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shellshock ride for over 15 years, using her annual pass to take weekly trips to the attraction. Turtles aren't known for their speed, but over the years, Tara's learned how to rack up some serious momentum on the ride. For Tara, spinning is a way of life, and the self-appointed Queen Shell Spinner tracks how many spins she clocks up every time she goes on the ride, tallying her totals at the end of every month. Tara's loyalty to her Ninja Turtle tradition is pretty impressive, but this next amusement park activity pays homage to a tradition that's hundreds of years old. To explore this next fairground moment, we have to travel back in time to 2013 AD, as we explore how the noble knights of Ramelot traveled to a heavy metal festival called Bloodstock and fought each other in the infamous Battle of the Bumps. With swords, armor, and shields, the conflict had all the components of a great medieval battle. But unlike the conflicts in the Middle Ages, this was caught on camera. <laughs> the harrowing war footage was filmed in 2013 when Bloodstock was visited by the Battle of the Nations a medieval battle championship that hosts reenactments of historic conflicts. The group's battles are usually pretty authentic, but in this case, they decided to stray away from reality by hosting a fight on the festival's bumper cards. As the knights rode into battle on their noble steeds, they engaged in a brutal conflict, swinging their weapons and, of course, bumping their cards. After five long minutes of conflict, the battle was called off by eerie forces beyond their control. AKA the fairground worker cut the power from their carts and told them their allocated time was over. With no clear winner, knights from both sides decided to form a truce before indulging in a grand feast of hot dogs and slurpees at ye old food truck. God, war is hell. Let's move from that medieval melee to another fairground fight as we check out a battle between man and beast. Now that's what I'd call a suitable facial expression. With an endless stream of spiders and snakes to contend with, when you hang around in Australia, where this clip was filmed, you're never truly safe from the country's aggressive wildlife. Which seems to include the birds, too. Back in 2019, this 10-year-old girl called Paige found this out the hard way as she was attacked by a dive-bombing ibis while riding the DC Hypercoaster at Warner Brothers Movie World in Queensland. As if the ride wasn't already scary enough. Paige seemed pretty shocked by the encounter, but the DC Hypercoaster's top speed of 71 miles per hour means that she hit the Ibis with a pretty powerful headbutt. And I think it's safe to say that the bird lost the fight. Paige may have won the battle against that Ibis, but unfortunately the war between man and beast continued on in another theater of war in Ferrari Land, Spain. Ferrari Land is a Spanish amusement park based around Ferrari's iconic sports cars. But unfortunately, it seems all their rides are convertibles, allowing this bird to get up close and personal to this poor rider's face. Alongside Australian Page's bird disaster, those accidental dive bombing birds made those thrill rides a little bit too thrilling. But something tells me this next amusement park rider would have appreciated a bit of action after falling asleep on a classic fairground ride. 
Lots of people have weird sleeping habits. My dad can't sleep without a warm cup of tea. My sis can't sleep without her teddy bears. And my weird brother can't sleep without his life-size real weight anime body pillow. Everyone has their own nighttime rituals. And incredibly, this guy likes to catch his Z's while spinning around high off the ground. Now, lots of online commenters have debated whether the writer has actually fallen asleep or whether he got so scared he passed out involuntarily. But if this guy actually did manage to fall asleep during the ride, it's probably a sign that this amusement park needs to up the fun a little bit. Whether you're at a small town fair or a major theme park, you can be sure you'll encounter a bunch of terrifying thrill rides set up there to draw in a crowd. Of all the rides at amusement parks, one of the most popular and terrifying is the Slingshot, a reverse bungee that launches riders hundreds of feet into the air with two elastic ropes. The ride is so scary that lots of fairgrounds attach cameras to the cage recording their passengers with some pretty hilarious results. This clip comes from 2022 when two teenagers decided to brave a slingshot ride together. As the friends wait for a lift off, Jenna seems pretty terrified. But she needn't have worried. The ride actually turned out to be a pretty relaxing experience, offering her a free blow dry and a 30 second power nap. As the slingshot launched into the air and Abby started screaming in terror, Jenna decided to float off the dreamland, passing out into a momentary slumber. But why? Well, as Jenna's body was launched into the air and back down again repeatedly, it's likely that the extreme changes in momentum caused blood in her brain to be redirected elsewhere. This meant that her brain was momentarily starved of oxygen, causing her to black out and presumably dream about the safety of the teacup rides below. This sounds pretty terrifying, but medical professionals claim that fainting momentarily in this way is mostly safe. And when Jenna woke up from her nap, she felt well enough to go on the ride again. Falling asleep or passing out on a fairground ride is certainly pretty odd and a little embarrassing, but other people have had far more shameful incidents at amusement parks. This TikToker's trip down a water slide turned their hairstyle into a bob as their wig was left floating in the water at the bottom of the tube. The TikToker had a good laugh about the escaped wig when reaching the bottom of the slide, but they're not the only one who was left wigging out while attending an amusement park. <laughs> This poor woman lost her wig and her dignity as she went down a slide in Detroit, Michigan. Losing your wig in front of a crowd of laughing people is a pretty hairy situation, but not all amusement parks are so chaotic and some of them offer a far more relaxing experience. The Yunchi Amusement Park in Beppu, Japan is a water park spa hybrid that famously features the world's first hot tub roller coaster. As people board the unique roller coaster, an attendant comes and fills each carriage with buckets of hot, soapy spring water, giving the riders a relaxing hot tub experience while they make their way around the track. Outside of the roller coaster, the entire park is themed like a spa, featuring heated pools and other water-based attractions. This unique theme is a result of the park's location on Kyushu, a Japanese island with a giant active volcano called Mount Aso. The island is covered in natural springs that are heated by the volcano, and a huge percentage of them are located in the city of Beppu. Beppu's system of 2,900 hot spring vents is famous in Japan, and in 2017, the city decided to capitalize on its unique geological feature by using it to build a hot spring-themed park. 
The Yunchi Park uses spring water for almost all of its rides, making it the world's first spa amusement park. But unfortunately, not all Japanese water parks offer such a calming experience. This grainy footage comes from Tokyo Summerland, a water park in Japan with an insanely crowded wave pool. The swimmers are packed into the pool shoulder to shoulder, and the size of their colorful floats and inflatables means that you can't even see the water that they're swimming in. In some parts of the world, wave pools like this are incredibly popular, and this level of overcrowding isn't unique to Tokyo Summerland. This footage from a water park in China shows a similar wall of swimmers all desperate to have a turn in the waves. To be fair, lots of the swimmers look like they're having fun, but I can't help but imagine what it's like to get swept underwater and have to fight through the impenetrable wall of legs and rubber floats to get to the surface. <laughs> I think I'll stick to the lazy river. Thankfully, health and safety regulations in the USA mean that you'll never see a wave pool that overcrowded in the States. However, those rules haven't always been so strictly enforced, and one of the most dangerous water parks to ever exist once stood in America's garden state, New Jersey. Allow me to take you back to the 1970s, a time of flares, disco, and action park, a pioneering water park that's gained infamy for its death-defying rides and startling list of health and safety violations. Action Park was one of the first water parks in America, so it was forced to invent several of their rides from scratch. This led to the creation of experimental attractions like a hay maze, which real snakes occasionally found their way into, a 60 mile per hour alpine slide made out of concrete, and the cannonball loop, the world's first water slide with a full loop at the bottom. Action Park's owner Eugene Mulvihill wanted the innovative slide to be a thrilling experience. But when the attraction opened in 1983, it soon became clear that lots of people couldn't build up enough speed to make it all the way around the loop, and they'd only make it halfway before falling down and hitting the plastic below. Soon, children emerging from the slide with bruises and loose or entirely missing teeth became the norm, and one day kids started coming out the end with cuts and abrasions. It wasn't clear what was causing the wounds, so an employee crawled into the tube to investigate and discovered several missing teeth embedded into the plastic slide, realizing that the pearly whites were harming people as they slid over them. Unsurprisingly, the cannonball loop was soon disassembled and retired from the park. But the ride was just one of Eugene Mulvihill's many transgressions, and the park's lack of proper planning and care led to countless injuries and six casualties in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. This didn't deter potential guests, and people still flock to New Jersey to get their own taste of the dangerous, death-defying fun at Class Action Park. This continued until 1996 when the park finally closed down after a string of personal injury lawsuits used up all of Mulvihill's funds and bankrupted him. Today, a modern, safer water park called Mountain Creek sits on the same property. The original action park is nothing but a distant memory as middle-aged New Jerseyans look at the old scars that they picked up at the park and tell their kids about a forgotten era where a trip to your water park could literally cost you your life. When hearing about the insane stories that took place at Action Park, it feels like a park that dangerous could never exist today. However, some modern-day local fairground owners are just as irresponsible as Eugene Mulvihill. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I could barely tie my own shoelaces, let alone operate a giant fairground ride. As a result, when TikToker Anna King queued up to go on this giant death-defying attraction, she was shocked to discover that the entire thing was being run by a small child. It isn't clear whether Anna still went on the ride after making the discovery, but I know I wouldn't. Call me crazy, but I think if you want to operate a fairground ride, you should be grown enough to actually ride it. I think we can all agree that employing kids to operate fairground rides is pretty irresponsible. But then again, some fully grown amusement park workers prove that adults can be just as immature as children. Now 
I don't want to call Mickey Mouse an irresponsible pet owner, but a dog that aggressive should clearly be kept on a leash. Regardless, this crazy footage comes from 2007 when a Pluto mascot at Disney World started chasing a kid around the park in front of a crowd of shocked onlookers. Apparently, the kid was messing with the mascot by repeatedly pulling on his tail and kicking him in the shins, pushing the mascot to run after the kid and teach him a lesson. To be fair to Pluto, dealing with kids like that must be pretty irritating, but still, attacking children at Disney World is pretty frowned upon, and the mascot reportedly quit his job soon after the incident. In the actor's defense, Disney World aims to leave children with memories that last a lifetime, and I'm sure that kid will be talking to a therapist about this episode for years to come. But as bad as Disneyland visits can occasionally be for the guests, the park staff seem to have it much worse, with employees experiencing some very embarrassing moments. Disney World likes to describe itself as the most magical place on Earth. But unfortunately, in 2008, a group of Disney fans found out the hard way that magic isn't real when an employee in a Mike Wazowski costume tripped over his own feet during a meet and greet. The incident was pretty embarrassing for the actor, but accidents happen and I'm pretty sure Disney gave him one more chance. Now, given those two clips occurred five years apart, we can reasonably assume that these were two different actors playing the role of Mike, but it does suggest this one-eyed costume may be among the hardest for Disney staff to wear without falling. At least he didn't get any lasting injuries from the fall, though, like spraining an ankle or losing his head. Oof, that could have gone better. The actor in the costume was thankfully okay, but I'm sure his boss had a few angry words to squeak about these blunders. By contrast to those last folks, some of the guests who visit theme parks have absolutely no trouble staying upright. Check it out. At first glance, this gravity-defying individual looks like the world's most casually dressed superhero, but his seemingly superhuman ability to walk up walls is actually owed to a unique fairground ride called the Gravitron. This attraction is a giant hollow cylinder that rapidly spins around while the riders stand inside it. As the ride spins, the people inside it experience a centrifugal force, kind of like socks in a washing machine, which pushes the riders against the wall of the cylinder allowing them to lift their feet off the ground and momentarily float. While most riders spend the ride lying back and trying not to hurl, people who frequently ride Gravitrons can learn how to use this centrifugal force to seemingly defy gravity by standing up horizontally as the G-force locks them in place. Unsurprisingly, perfecting this trick takes a lot of practice, and most people who try to find their inner superhero while riding the Gravitron are left looking pretty foolish particularly when viewed from outside. Check this out. These unlucky fairground goers were riding the Gravitron in Safari Land, Saudi Arabia. They managed to climb high up the cylinder like Spider-Man, but ended up caught in a web as the G-Force pinned them to the walls. Speaking of being pinned in high places, other people have suffered notably more palm sweat-inducing experiences at amusement parks after getting stuck. Back in 2021, Anita Wheeler was forced to walk down a 235-foot tall staircase after she got stuck on a roller coaster called The Big One at Pleasure Beach Blackpool, UK. On the rare occasion that high winds cause The Big One to get stuck, an attendant will often climb up a staircase next to the tracks to escort the riders back down to safety. However, some smaller fairgrounds are a bit less cautious. Back in November 2014, these kids had a pretty scary experience when their roller coaster carriage got stuck halfway around the track at the North Florida Fair in Tallahassee. Unfortunately, there weren't any stairs for the family to climb down, so the attendant had to scale the roller coaster and manually push their carriage to the end of the track. Yikes. Big yikes. 
Getting stuck on a roller coaster must have been pretty bad for those poor kids, but luckily other guests are able to make happier memories at amusement parks. Every great amusement park has an arcade, and every great arcade has a copy of the rhythm game Dance Dance Revolution. Now when I jump on DDR, all I can do is two-step like a drunk dad at a wedding. But back in 2016, a man called Ryan Oaks spotted this guy playing the game at the Virginia Beach Arcade. This anonymous man's DDR dance moves are truly extraordinary, as he plays a two-player game on his own and hits every note perfectly. With insane skills like that, when the Dance Dance Revolution finally comes, I want this man to be our glorious leader. Well, every amusement park has a closing time, and it looks like we're about ready to head home and wrap up our adventure of theme park ridiculousness. Have you ever experienced a hilarious, horrifying, or downright ridiculous moment at an amusement park? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.